Hi, welcome back to the channel and video number 105. This will be part two in the Subaru powered aircraft series. A lot of people enjoyed uh, part one and I found uh, a few more of my customers and other people I know flying Subarus who wanted to show how well their Subaru engines are working in their aircraft, uh, in some cases years later. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this one uh, as much as the first one. We're off to Australia for the first aircraft, the uh, Zenith 750, built by Michael Heal. Michael has some cool videos of this plane and some others on his YouTube channel, and I'll have a link in the description so you can go there and check that out. The prop is a ground adjustable NR from the Ukraine and the gearbox is an SPG-4 from Air Trikes in Canada. Michael's a very talented guy, as you can see here, and he's built uh, some other airplanes before, and he's working on another one right now. This is kind of the bonus feature here. This is uh, an airplane Michael was flying before. And I just love this photo. Just uh, roll it up to the gas pumps and fill her up. And we're off to Texas next to have a look at uh, Mark Kedrowski's airplane, uh, Glass Star. And Mark has the highest time Subaru powered airplane that I'm personally aware of. There may be others that have more time, but uh, this is pretty impressive. So for all the naysayers out there that don't think that auto engines can work well in airplanes, here's a prime example that uh, proves you wrong. Anyway, you slice it, Mark got uh, excellent service out of the Subaru in his Glass Star. His real world results are undeniable and I don't think he has any regrets of using a Subaru compared to a Lycoming. Mark obviously flies his airplane a lot more than most of us. I think this is uh, just super impressive. Next we move to Ontario, Canada, and Philip Johnson's really impressive Cozy Mark IV RG. Here you can see the engine with the factory aluminum intake manifold, which is very heavy. And here's the composite one that he's made to fit under the cowling better and save some weight. Uh, very nice work. Here you can see the stainless steel header that he made to uh, fit in the airplane better. Again, uh, really nice work here. This is a, a big, big project, and it took him a long time to complete it, but uh, the end result is really impressive to me. I can only imagine the many hundreds of hours that must have gone into making this custom cowling. Um, superb. And Philip has a very informative website uh, detailing how he built this airplane. He's got some uh, nice videos on there too. So if you're interested in looking at that, there's a link in the description. Philip has had a couple of different propellers on this airplane, and he's still uh, tweaking this one currently, trying to find the best compromise between climb and cruise. And the maximum speed to date has been 196 knots at 10,000 feet. 
but the engine's still not turning uh, maximum RPM for maximum power. Uh, this is pretty impressive for a 3.3 liter engine. For the final feature today, we're off to sunny Norway to have a look at Bjorn Anders RV7 with a turbocharged 3 liter Subaru flat 6. Bjorn doesn't have a thermostat fitted to this engine. So he's just controlling engine temps with uh, simple duct tape here, and it works. Bjorn has a nice setup here. The airplane is just in the uh, shop here, and he's got a 1,000 foot grass runway, which he also plows out in the winter time to operate from. So he just hops in and goes. Pretty nice. These scenes are pretty common in places like Canada and Norway, where you've got a long winter. You've got to make the best of it. You don't want to put the airplane away for half the year. So you just uh, fire up and uh, go and land on a frozen lake. 100 low lead's very expensive in Europe generally. And with the Subaru, which was designed to run on uh, unleaded automotive fuel, that's what Bjorn's using here, even though it's turbocharged. That works very well and saves him a lot of money. Eventually spring and summer comes to Norway, and you can put away your heavy jackets and boots and uh, enjoy some of the nice uh, blue skies. And yes, even the grass gets green in Norway. And you've got to get your vitamin D, of course, too. So this is a good way to get it. Another snippet of life in Norway. Cool photo. And I just wanted to thank Michael, Mark, Philip, and Bjorn. Uh, they sent in lots of photos and specs on their airplanes and some video and it just wouldn't be possible to make videos like this without uh, their help. So thank you very much guys. And thanks to everyone for watching. We'll see you next time.